There's a Canadian out there named Mikkel Caprell, and this guy's no exception. Now, Mikkel is an outstanding runner, and in 2002, he won the Toronto Waterfront Marathon. The guy's a great runner. This spring, though, at the Salt Lake City Marathon, he attempted to be a world champion at a different kind of sport. Here's a look at what it takes to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. It is brutally painful and challenging, but that's what I love about it. No one can say, you must not run faster than this. The human spirit is indomitable. Those are the words of the legendary runner, Roger Bannister, the man who broke the four minute mile. And like Bannister, Mikkel Capral is pushing the limits. He's come to Salt Lake City to try to break a world record, one held by his arch rival, Zach Warren. It's the ultimate test of endurance, 42.2 kilometers of pavement, persistence, and pain. And the prize, the Guinness World Record for running the marathon while juggling. Well, technically, it's called joggling. And the 34-year-old Canadian, Mikkel Capral, and his 25-year-old American rival, Zach Warren, are the best in the world. And two kilometers into the Salt Lake City Marathon, they're side by side, both trying to beat a time of two hours and 52 minutes. How fast is that? Even without juggling balls, that time would put them in the top 2% of marathon runners in the world. And as I discovered, joggling at that speed takes a lot of training. So this is it. All right. This is joggling. Now, it's I'm looking bad. at the ball. <laughs> Holy smoke! Yeah, eventually you don't have to look at the balls. You don't Just have to look at the look ball. Look at the road ahead. <laughs> yes! yes! Oh! Okay, so what happens? Hey, we both dropped. So what happens? So once you drop it, you yeah. go back to your drop point. Yeah. You go behind it, a couple yeah. steps. Yeah. And you start again. You start again. Okay. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yo-yo on both sides. Yo-yo on both. Oh yeah. So tell me how your career as a joggler began. My career as a joggler began when I, well, really, I was about 12 years old and I read the Guinness Book of World Records and there was a joggling record there. And I, I thought, that is the coolest thing. <laughs> I was a bit of a geek. Yeah, <laughs> and, okay. uh, well, at least you're a self-aware geek. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so I went out and I had juggling balls. I knew how to juggle. Right. I knew how to run and I went out to a park and I tried it out and I, it worked. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, we're joggers as well. Have you ever juggled and jogged? No, never. Do you know this is the world famous joggler right here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you heard about him? Yeah. Now, now, in the jogging world, is he considered a maniac, uh, a weirdo, or just an incredibly gifted athlete? I think a little bit of both. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so breaking world records, that's part of your goal. That's your drive. That's part of it, yeah. It's just, uh, just being the best in the world is something feels good. And so juggling was essentially a fallback position for you. Like you thought, this is something I could do. Could it have been anything else? If it wasn't juggling, what could it have been? Well, I did break the world record for fastest uh, marathon pushing a baby in a stroller. <laughs> the, the year before, I was uh, the juggler. I just love talking to you. And yes, it's true. Mikkel finished a marathon in two hours and 49 minutes while pushing his daughter Annika in a stroller, beating the old world record by 16 minutes. But now he's focused entirely on reclaiming his joggling record that he lost last year. Who's come up to challenge your crown? <coughs> a guy named Zach Warren, who's a Harvard uh, Divinity student. He came along and uh, he had read about my record and uh, ended up breaking it, breaking my record by 41 seconds. And uh, that kind of got me. Did that burn you? A little bit burned, yeah. So sorry, so, so Zach's a Harvard Divinity student. Yes. So he's not just, he's got a lot of, he's got a pretty good resume. Harvard. He's, he's all right, he's a circus performer too. God on his side. 
How do you how do you go against that in an Ivy League religious circus performing juggler, who's by the way significantly younger than you? True, but I still think I'm gonna kick his butt. But 20 kilometers into the race, Mikkel's having a hard time kicking Zach's butt. Once again, Zach is pulling away. My goal in the Salt Lake City Marathon is to break 252.15. To break, to break that record, that's my goal. So my strategy is I don't, I don't juggle until the week before the race. And then I'll do maybe one run while juggling. Because I'm a, I'm a, I used to work in a circus, I already know how to juggle. I do it all the time, I do shows all the time, so it's not a big deal. I have a feeling Miko's gonna break it too. I just have a feeling. He's, he's, not a, he's a fast runner, he's, he's got a lot in him. He's not gonna give up. He's, you know, those daggone Canadians just won't give up. At a water station several kilometers later, Miko finally catches Zach, and then he takes a risk. Unlike Zach, he chooses not to stop and take a drink of water. He forges on ahead. In the official rules of juggling, a runner must be juggling every step of the race, turning water stations into a lucrative spot to make up some ground. It's all part of the psychological battle of the juggling marathon. And now Zach has to fight to close the gap. Now, is it a sport? I mean, because, of course, there is a clown sure. element here. Some people may laugh at you. This guy's a nutty. He's a crazy guy. This is a, a foolish thing to do. do. You know, is it a foolish thing to do? No, it's a great thing to do. It's a wonderful sport. And uh, every year or month that I do it, I grow to appreciate it more. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of nuance to the juggling. If you think too much about the juggling, then your running slows down. If you think too much about the running, then you drop a ball. And since you are essentially the Tiger Woods of the sport, give us an idea of the kind of money you've made in the, as a juggler. Sure. Uh, I've made exactly zero dollars. Nice. Yeah. It's, uh, my wife wishes it was a little more. Right. You know, we're, we're struggling with, uh, with the whole you know, cash flow from the juggling career. I have trouble justifying it. <laughs> and well, what's your, how do you do it? Well, it's something that I enjoy doing, and so my wife sort of uh, is, has been incredibly supportive for, because I guess she loves me. Right. And, isn't, uh, th isn't that the greatest miracle, how blind love <laughs> is, really? <laughs> But is it really just about getting your name in some book? How proud does it make you to be in the Guinness Book of World Records? It probably shouldn't be that important, but it is. There's one guy here that has put eight rattlesnakes in his mouth for 12 seconds. He's in the book. There are people that are balanced on one foot for 84 hours. In other words, this is a club that many people would not necessarily want to join. No, that's <laughs> Why true. did you want to join this club? Well, I didn't want to join that club, but there are some there are some other really interesting records in there, and there are some that uh, are amazing achievements where you think, "Wow, I can't believe someone could do that." And so that that's part of the the incentive is to just do something that's kind of to make someone say, "Wow." And on the road in Salt Lake City, Mikkel and Zach are once again tied, and now both of them are astonishing the crowd. What's your plan? How are you gonna, how are you gonna win this race? Set the pace for sub 252, which is the record, and we'll probably pace for under 250 and stay together. And towards the end, I plan to make a move and uh, just pull away maybe in the last 10K. What if he keeps up with you? What are you gonna do? You, you're just gonna have some stuff in the tank left. I hope so. If he pulls, tries to pull ahead, I hope to just stay with him and then just try and out kick him. Right, not, not kick him though. No, literally kick him. No, not, yeah. you'd not kick his balls away. No, I won't be touching his balls. <laughs> 
There are now just seven kilometers left. Mikkel and Zach are running the pace they both predicted, sub 250. Both on pace to break the Guinness World Record. And now both of the men are blowing through the water stations. Yeah, my nightmare is final sprint, last 100 meters. I'm just ahead of them. I'm going to take them. Bam. I drop a ball. Big nightmare. But it's Zach, the circus performer, not Miko, who keeps dropping his balls. And that's a sure sign of exhaustion. With a mere five kilometers until the finish line, Zach actually stops to take a drink and Miko finally surges ahead, making his move. It's, it's the hardest thing you can imagine doing to, to joggle for a whole marathon. And you know, I'm not smiling at the last few miles of a, of a, a joggling marathon. It is brutally painful and challenging, but that's what I love about it. But Mikkel's not loving this moment. With less than two kilometers to go, he hits the wall. He stops dead. Mikkel glances back, expecting to see Zach. For 40 seconds, it looks like he'll pass out. The world record is still in reach, but barely. Did you always want to be famous as a kid? Yeah, I, you know, I thought I'd be doing something a little more recognized. Yeah. But I, I did hope that I would be famous uh, for something like did. filmmaking or, uh, you know, become a famous movie director. Is that what, was that your dream? That was originally my dream. So, so you've picked, you've picked essentially your niche, but you're darn good at that niche. Yeah, I guess that's the key in life. You find what you can do the best, no matter how strange it may seem, and you, uh, you go for it. Maybe that's what elevates Meikle's joggling from an obscure obsession. He's found something, call it a sport or a competition, that he's given himself over to. He's committed. And in that one joggler's commitment, you can see every 40-year-old who's still trying to put on that hockey gear in the lunch bucket league, and every 75-year-old who refuses to retire. It's the high of pure ownership even if what you own seems, on the outside, to be utterly pointless. And in Meikle's case, incredibly painful. Because now Meikle is in pain, and he takes another 25 second break. Zach is now closing in. Is the world record slipping away? But with one final act of will, Mikkel joggles on to the finish line. He did it. He beat Zach. But it's not enough. Meikle's missed the world record by just over a minute. Almost the exact amount of time he stopped near the end of the race. Well, yeah, I'm disappointed I didn't break the record. However, um, I will qualify that by saying that I gave it uh, absolutely everything I had. And there was no way I could have run faster today. Uh, so I feel good about that. Zach finishes three and a half minutes later, and the greatest joggling duel in history is over at last. Like this is like sports. This is a sport. It feels like, I don't know, it should be an Olympic event almost. We missed it. I thought I was gonna pass out 24 miles. And in his state of exhaustion, Miko realizes that his days of chasing records may well be over. 
I can't, uh, I can't be doing this again. It's, it's too much. You feel like you, you drain every possible drop of uh, mental and physical energy, and you, you wonder if you'll ever get it back again, you know? But I just couldn't catch his record, so I guess uh, I won the battle, but he won the war. <laughs> What a great battle. As much as the, the sport seems funny, the, it, he really is a great athlete. Now, here's Dakota. Mikko Capril has decided to give up joggling since that race about a month ago. He has not jogged and juggled. And here's the other Coda. A few weeks ago, a guy named Michael Wardian of Arlington, Virginia, beat Mikko Capril's record for running a marathon while pushing a baby in a stroller. So right now, Mikko has no world records at all, but he has thoughts now and this is true, of trying to beat the world record for jogging a marathon backward. That one, I don't think I will join him on. He always needs to have the twist. <laughs> That's right. So do we, and we have a lot more stories to bring you starting right after the break. Public support had been eroding for the mission in Afghanistan even before another soldier was killed this week. Evan and I interview Foreign Affairs Minister Peter McKay together and ask him if he can persuade Canadians to stay put. Also, this week, a Saskatchewan woman, this incredible story, it happens not a lot, but enough that it got our attention. A Saskatchewan woman gave birth in a Walmart washroom and left her baby in the toilet. Should mothers in crisis have a place to safely abandon their newborns? Should they be charged? We'll have that debate. Also, everybody is talking about this. Rosie O'Donnell has left The View after fighting on air with one of her co-hosts. Is she too much for TV? Is she riding a publicity wave that would make Donald Trump jealous? Why are we all so interested in rushing and seeing that big fight with her and Elizabeth Hasselbeck? We'll have that story and. What's the connection between praising God and saving the planet? God is saying that when doomsday comes, then the earth will be shaken with a violent shaking and the earth will reveal what burdens her. We'll ask if faith communities have a special calling to go green. And everyone's talking about the 100-mile diet. But can Bonnie Stern make it work in the kitchen? It's very funny. Like, you know, things that you just take for granted um, are, are like pepper or uh, lemons or, uh, well, chocolate we don't really take for granted. And Liam Titcomb will perform live on our Sunday Spotlight. You won't want to miss that. Please stay with us. What would you pick as Canada's Seven Wonders? The National and Sounds Like Canada want to know. Make sure your favorites make the list. Visit cbc.ca slash seven wonders to cast your vote. And watch for the results on the National and Sounds Like Canada. To learn more about Rona by Design, visit rona.ca. It's your interactive tool for renovating in style. rona.ca, from the Canadian how-to people. With Rona by Design, choose from among the latest styles to realize the home facade of your dreams and earn Air Miles Reward Miles. Rona, the Canadian how-to people. The tests are completed. 